All right, now we're back here with another game and it's a rapid game of commentary series. And someone asked me earlier today about playing a game as black. Actually, I did play a game as black, but it was, I played the Sicilian. I want to play the Caracan in all my black videos. So that's the reason why I'm making a new video. Uh, so here I am on Lee Chess right here. So let's go ahead and create a game real quick. Go ahead and get started. I'm going to play as black. And um, what I will say, another thing while I'm waiting on this is that we will, um, I will in this series be playing against um, uh, some of my computers that have, um, that have, um, that have uh, just no online connection, such as the Centaur as well. So I'll be playing against a computer in rapid games. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Okay, so now this is sort of a, a going to be a funny Caracom, but we're going to, he's not a, uh, we're just going to go ahead and take here because that's what's, that's what's going to happen here. We're going to go ahead and hop out. <coughs> now he's trying this little trick here where like you could, some kind of way if I made a mistake, he could, like for example, if I push G6 right now, he could knight takes knight and that'll be checkmate. You know, and, 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 and the thing to do in a case like this is just go ahead and develop your piece. Like, you don't even have to worry about him taking that or anything. So just go ahead and develop a knight. Let him take the knight. If he don't want to take the knight, I'm taking the knight on next next go around. It's really just that simple. Because that way, I'm a, I, even though I move my knight twice, I, I move it twice with tempo. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take this. First thing, and the reason why is that I want to remove a piece on that's threatening my side of the board. And you might be wondering, going against open principle because I moved this knight here already, but I get to move this piece to the square that I want a knight on anyway. I traded a piece as black, which is great. And also, I'm doing it with tempo. So basically, I don't lose any moves from this here. He should have just went knight takes knight. And that would have been, I think, uh, again, he's not losing anything for sure. It's not bad. But I think that just principally, that would have been the better way to play. Um, now, I don't want to block in uh, my, bishop, my bishop here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this bishop here outside of the pawn chain, then proceed with pushing this. So that way um, I can get this uh, my black bishop out on this diagonal here, which is the uh, F1 to uh, I mean the f8 to the uh, a3 diagonal and I also got my queen open on this short diagonal here as well so we're just going to go ahead and um and one quick note there's no need to go bishop here uh to uh what is that uh g4 because he just hops his knight in right here to um easily to um <coughs> excuse me um e5 and it threatens my bishop and it's just no point in doing that when you can just put your bishop right here on this and that's just it on that square there on uh, L5. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to just push up now. So I've achieved a lot here in this open. His queen is quote unquote centralized, but it doesn't really mean anything. Um, I'm just going to continue developing as normal. Nothing, nothing going on here. He could hop his knight to h4 and trade for my bishop, which is, you know, totally OK. Him hopping the knight in, uh, it doesn't really do anything. It actually, just makes makes um, it just makes for a trade. But if I did trade, um, think about this line. If I went knight to g4, he takes I take back with the bishop, but he'd come over here to uh, g3. Then he's going to hit this pawn here. So actually. I can do that, but you need to prepare stuff like that first. Don't get too excited. So go ahead and castle. For, now, I, I don't have to castle either, but I'm going to castle because it, it, it doesn't like he, he can get a, you know, sort of a sort of a, an attack on the uh, king side here. He might could sacrifice a knight. Say if he had a queen on f3, he sacrifices knight. I take and he could take my bishop and my bishop and, hit, and it would be pinned. This pawn would be pinned. To my king so i have to watch stuff like that so i'm gonna go ahead and castle because i don't think that um we have too much to worry about in terms of a king's side attack here he castles great so now what he just done he just allowed me to trade pieces which is uh great great i mean i'll, I'll... see now had i done that while ago without being castle i'll show you why this doesn't make any sense because he's gonna go knight takes knight he doesn't have to he could just move his queen away Yeah. 
Yes, that's right. He, 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 did, uh, he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. But we're just going to go ahead and take this here. We're not playing any games with our any, you know, anything like that. And the best thing to do, because <laughs> he may get a bishop right here on this right here, but don't even worry about that because of the, um, because we can just park our bishop back on our G6. We're going to deploy our queen to a somewhat active square, which is uh, here, because that kind of holds, you know, puts a little pressure on this pawn. Um, I also got a maybe could use uh, the square here, which is our uh, C5 at some moment, maybe to hit his bishop, trade a couple of pawns, a couple of anything can happen. So, OK, not bad. That was a, I got to say that was a good move. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the open file. And we're going to go to the open file with. Probably we want to keep this right here just in case something happened, this rook. So it's always this dilemma, which rook do you use to go to an open file? We're going to go ahead and use this rook here because this rook here, even if you don't move it, is doing something that's helping protect the king. This king, this rook over here isn't doing as much, but at later on in the game, who knows, that rook could have stood better there. But if you had to pick one or the other, sometimes I go by which one is doing something now. This one is doing something now. It is actually just protecting this pawn if it was ever to get attacked. So that, that was the logic. That's okay. So he's pushing for this, um, this uh, kingside attack here, which is interesting. We are going to Not worry too much about that. So we need to deploy. Let's just go ahead and get on this. I, you know what? I'm going to let him push that because he's going to get it, that pawn in a situation where it's actually going to help protect my king. And he's not going to get that little pincer mate where he get a pawn here and get his queen here. That's just not going to happen. And I'll tell you why in a minute why that's not going to happen. You'll find out shortly why that's not going to happen. OK, so he goes here, which is awesome, because, again, now all I have to do is just push this here. Because now my rook is not in the way. I knew he was going to do that because now. All I got to do is just back my bishop up to here. He takes this. Totally, totally uh, good move. And we're just going to go here. Just that simple. And then we're going to trade off that bishop in a minute or make a move it uh, at some point. And that's just going to be the end of that um, attack. So when you get that attack, um, as you can see, my this bishop stands strong right here. It still hits B8. So. When you do these sort of attacks, like it doesn't it's not that it doesn't mean anything. It is sort of an easy way to play as white, but um, and that's a mysterious move. I guess he wants to push his pawn. I get it. It's not so mysterious. He wants to push his pawn here. All right. Not so bad, I guess. Let's see, where can we get our queen at that makes sense here? Hmm. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We got to get our queen to a better square here. And... We're just going to move it up here to C5. Go ahead and offer the trade of bishops. Pull our queen back. He doesn't really have any serious attack, but you do at the same time. You, you don't want to just disregard any of this stuff. I mean, you do have to take it serious after all. So what he's hoping on now is for me to um, to uh, take here. And, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, back this bishop up to here. 
Let's go ahead and trade. And so he's he's trying, and, and it's a good move that he's doing. He's cracking open the uh, file here because when he pushes F5, um, hmm, now that I did not expect. Hmm, let me think about this here for a minute. What happens if I go? I'll tell you what we'll do. I was thinking about what happens if I go rook to uh, D, D3. Uh, not so bad. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take this, and I'm going to show you why. There's an elegant way to defend against the pincer mate here. First of all, we're going to go ahead and pull our queen here to threaten that pawn. We're going to make him trade some pieces now. What I could do, I could have just went here with a check at first, but I'm going to show you how, because don't forget, you can another defense how you get rid of this here is you slide over here. He's trying to come over. This is so... uh pretty pretty interesting here so uh let's go we want to go ahead and get our rooks uh because he doesn't have anything yet he's oh he's threatening to push the ah, i see what he's want Okay, so if he does that, he's going to be in some trouble. Let's go ahead and put our rook here. He wants to go G, G4. If he goes G4, I have a check, a deadly check, actually, on our, on our E4. I'm sort of playing with fire right now, but not really, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'll show, I'll show you the best way to defend against in this situation right here. You just got to be cool in a situation like this here and uh, not worry too much about it. We could just go ahead and trade queens. Since I got control of the file. Let's do that. I'll show, I'll show you in a minute what I was thinking about the defense. I'll, I'll show you at the end of the game when I go to the analysis board. One way to defend against this right here, which is very easy. It sort of makes you passive, but at the same time, um, it... You know, it's just what it is, because after we trade queens, I'm going to be threatening this pawn over here. And I, I think I got a little activity here that uh, warrants this. Wait a minute. Whoops. He takes here. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Takes here. Took the wrong piece. All right. There we go. So don't forget, I'm threatening this pawn right here, actually. Okay. There we go. So now we... I'm going to uh, push this up. We're going to try to win this pawn here is what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to just basically move our king around here and just step up to win this pawn is what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to round this pawn up. All right, so now, before we do that, let's go here because we want to put our bishop right here on this file here. And he wants to trade. Yep, that's fine. All right. I think he might be in trouble doing that. Let's go here. Yeah, I think I might can squeeze. I, it might not look like it, but you got to realize my path, my, my king to come here, 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 take this pawn or whatever is pretty wide open. And my bishop is going to just scoop back to right here in a second. It's just um, really, I think, going to be difficult for him to for him to deal with that. Though it might be a trick I haven't seen yet. OK, so we're going to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and trade. Wait a minute, should we trade? 
Yeah, let's just go ahead and trade. I'm going to give his king a little leg up here. And he's going to step down and hit my pawn. Let's go ahead and come up here. Okay. Just going to go ahead here. Take that. And then next thing we'll do is we will force some trades here. We just come here to this diagonal to keep him from crossing that line so easy and also keeping a little pressure on his pawn. I mean, I still think that it's, if I win this game, it's going to be a tough win. But I think that he can't really leave this side of the board so easy. And these pawns over here are going to kind of handle themselves on this side of the board, which is great that he's pushing this here where I can go ahead and because, again, he didn't even need to even do that. Um, I may. Let me see here. I may need to stop him from stepping his king in so easy. So let me go ahead and go here. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and take this guy. He better go back to that diagonal because I pushed his. He might be in some trouble here. We'll see. I see what he wants. He wants to trade bishops. And to me, that's if he wants to trade bishops. Um, but we're not going to trade so easily here. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, I missed my move. I missed the move. I should have I should have went here first and then pulled my bishop right here because then he couldn't stop me from taking it. Oh, but he could have hit this pawn here. So we can't really give him that pawn. Uh, okay. Let's push up here. I think getting around this, he's going to try to trade bishops. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to trade bishops. Yeah, I, I'm, got, I'm not going to trade bishops. But first, I am going to push here. Hmm. Let's push here first. Okay. And then that way. Hmm. Okay. Not so bad, I gotta say. I guess we could put him sort of in a deep freeze here. And try to just get him from. And now the tricky bit now, if I was to go here and, you know, put pressure in his pawn, he could pull his bishop right here and it would trap my bishop and he can just walk his king over there and take it. But of course, we're not going to let that happen. We're just going to back up to. To. Uh, let's see, should we back up here? Or should we push the pawn? Yeah, I don't touch it. So I'm going to just say, yeah. All right. I should have put it on the other side to entice him to push the pawn for it. We'll see what happens. Oh, so he pushed it. So now this is what I've been wanting right here. You know what? I might win this game with these pawns. If I go bishop takes bishop, I actually might could win this game. No, his bishop. Uh, no, because then he'd get a check here. So let's go. Let's go to here. Okay, he goes here. That's not a bad move at all. OK. 
Okay, so he takes. Okay, so now we're just gonna go here. Okay, so now we're gonna sort of put him in a, I think this might be a Zoo Zwan for him when I go here. Yeah, I think no matter where he moves. Yeah, give me that. He, he can't win this race because I, I just get a queen. It's just too quick. Yep, he can't win this race. And I just go get a queen. Okay. And I'll show you how to win with a... Okay, I was going to say I'll show you how to win with a queen versus all these pawns. Hold on, let me um, put a battery on my camera right quick so I can do a little bit of analysis here. My camera don't want my battery to die here. It's getting a little low here. Let me plug this up. All right, so let's go and go to the analysis board here. All right, so uh, move time computer analysis. Let's just do a request analysis. It'll just make it a little easier. I'm not going to try to do any full blown analysis. I'm just going to do something quick and just point out a few things that I was telling you about earlier. So yeah, I had a feeling that I kind of messed up somewhere here. So right here at that point, I want to see what that is, where he, where um, he was winning. Oh man, in the, in the opening, he was winning like that. Okay. Okay. So knight. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what loss of force check make the sequence. Oh, I missed a mate. See, that's what I was telling you about. I'm blind to that mate. So there you have it. He missed it. But again, there is this funny. Let's uh, let's back up for a second. You see this funny looking mate where like somebody puts a knight in front of your, your king. The, I guess now I shouldn't have pulled my knight out. I should have just uh, uh, pushed E6 would have been a much. Um, let's go back would have been a much better move here. Let's turn on the stock fish and see what it is. Yeah, F5, anything would have been fine. F5, I think E6 would have been okay. It would have been worse because you blocked your bishop's finger. Let me just see what that say from a practical. Yeah, that's totally fine. It says plus zero nine, but that's not so bad. All right, so let's get back to the actual game here. Now, um, he spiked in a few times. I don't want to look at this big spike here. What was this right here? I just want to get, I just want to do a quick before I get to, wait a minute, let's just, this, this thing is so, um, hold on, let's go, yeah, there we go, bishop to e7, let's see what it says here. Yeah, see, I was thinking he was going to push here, and I take, and he goes like this, and you see that this here is open, and, um, it's just, it's just, it, I just thought he was going to do that, but I didn't think it was quite that winning. It's not super winning. It's only 1.8 pawns in his favor. Again, when you're doing computer analysis, just remember this. Anything like less than maybe three pawns, for surely less than two pawns, it's still a lot of play there. Unless it's, because again, once you get past like three or four pawns, it's like obvious, like almost anybody can win the game. So again, if you look at this position, there's a lot of play left here. It's hard to tell who's winning or who's losing. I thought white might have been slightly better, but th there you have it. So, oh, the defense here, um, what I wanted to show you, uh, let's just go back here when he got his, uh, I want to get back to, um, get to this one part of the game here and I'll show you this one defense and I'll show you, and then we'll take a look at that one last thing. Um, when we go here, um, and I think he takes, yeah, takes. And um, wait a minute, what happened here? I don't know what even happened. Oh, yeah, I think, oh, I took my bishop. Okay, so one way to defend against a position like this so you keep his queen from getting, let's just imagine, let's just move forward here and trade bishops. I'm going to make it trade bishops so I can show you. Yeah, let's imagine if he took, wait a minute, get back to the part of the game. And he goes here, you take, he take. Just imagine 
if he comes, let's just, let, I'm going to just make some moves, but I just want to prove the point. Just say if um, I went here, he came here, and he's threatening to get right here on our H6, which would be an unstoppable mate. Except for if you slide your king over here, if he comes down to right here, don't, again, I know this is not the way you play based on the position. It's just to show you the idea that if you pull your rook over here, look at that. It's actually minus one in your favor and you defend it against the mate. And not only that, you're just going to open, move the bishop out of the way and open up this G file against this king just like that. So um, that's the one thing I wanted to show you. Um, let's go back to the actual game here. That goes here. What was I going to show you? Um, I can't remember what I, what I was going to show you. Oh, about the bishop sacrifice I was talking about. I'll show you. Here we go. Let me get to it. Okay, under not if his king was say back on the on the um second rank, I would have sacrificed my bishop. Because for example, <laughs> I was thinking about going. I should, if I was thinking about going here, here, and here, right? It says equal. That actually was a good move, but the way I was looking at it was that if he went here with check and goes like this and then steps down to right here, he may have a check. Because even if he goes here and I take here, it's still hard for me to, I, I think... I don't know though. Actually, I, I, actually, that's yeah. This would have been winning for white. So this this was the line I had in my mind, and this would have lost. So what would have won in this case? Okay, instead of pushing the pawn, I should have pushed. Oh, f six, just to hold on to the pawn, keep the opposition. Just imagine if he would have checked me here. Um, would I step forward or step back? I oh, just step back. Then that way, oh, the idea would be probably be to push the H pawn as further up the board as possible. So that way it'll distract one or the other king or bishop. And then you could move in with your king somehow. All right. Well, anyway, that's a rapid game of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed my um, Karakon. Although I did slip mate in one right after I said it. But that's why it's one of those mates that's hard to see because even my opponent didn't see it. So watch out for that mate and... You will have a, you know, that will increase your success with using the um, Carol Khan opening.